Hi and welcome back to 2011 Studies. Thanks everybody for your patience. I uh, appreciate it. We're going to start up a new series of studies. I've been reviewing what everybody has been teaching um, really since December and uh, concerning Christ coming on the last day and uh, how certain teachings have sort of diverted away from the 8400 day uh, established teaching that Mr. Camping taught. Um, how some teachings um, two of which I'll mention uh, have nothing to do with salvation. In other words, they're, they're saying there is no more salvation and we're in this uh, time period of no more salvation, which I don't believe is true, true at all. Um, I posted a series, I think of five videos, which showed uh, how salvation will go to the last day. So this is important to do because <clears throat> I, I noticed one thing that is a common denominator in some of these teachings. They are not following the biblical patterns that have been established uh, by God through history. And what I'm talking about there is um, the captivity of Judah and what came after the 70 years, um, the years of Darius, the years of Cyrus, um, how Daniel was made the third ruler in the kingdom. All of that, um, after the writing on the wall, all of that uh, relates to the final seven years. Now what we have been teaching uh, on 2011 studies is that yes there was the pattern of Judah captivity of, of uh, 70 years and that translated into or 840 months and that translated into 8400 days uh, which Mr. Camping was teaching um, that ended in May 21, 2011. However, God revealed a lot more. He revealed a lot more because what comes after the 70 years historically shows what is the time period that we're in right now, the final seven years leading up to 2018. I believe 2011 to 2018 is divided by three and a half. The first half was like the silence in heaven. But man is attempting to shut up the heaven, and that's uh, that's when they're saying no more salvation, and that's wrong. So, but the first half was a period of time of famine. Now, <clears throat> there's been some criticism about the 1335 days, which we came to, and I don't know if people were expecting uh, a worldwide Pentecost at that point. I was not, because. I know of this uh, verse that I put in countdown to the last day, the very opening of it from Ezekiel, how this is a gradual salvation program until it comes to the last day when, when God, um, or up to the last day, final two years as far as I'm concerned, it, it, when it comes to a great explosion of the gospel going forth and saving a lot of people, but it's gradual. And what I mentioned in the book and I really wish I would have put this in uh, Seven Years to a Better Tomorrow because it so relates. I thought it related back then because I understood the progression of, you know, he measured to the ankle, he measured to the knees, he measured to the chest until there was healing waters to swim in. And these healing waters have everything to do with the gospel. If you study Ezekiel, you'll, you'll understand why and how. So that's a big aspect of the 1335 days blessed is he who waits and comes to the 1335th day 
which we came to in 2015. Now we're in 2016, and we're going to start seeing a progression of salvation happening worldwide. Um, <clears throat> I say see, but like I was trying to explain to somebody, we can't see God saving people. Um, that's just when God's Spirit goes forth. But there should be some evidence down the road that, yes, God is doing a, a great work. So I wanted to read this from Ezekiel, um, from the book Countdown to the Last Day. Healing waters to swim in. And when the man saw... I'm, I'm sorry, this is Ezekiel... Uh, 47.3 And when the man that had the, hit the line in his hand went forth eastward, he measured a thousand cubits and he brought me to he brought me through the waters. The waters were to the ankles. Again he measured a thousand and brought me through the waters and the waters were to the knees. Again he measured a thousand and he brought me through. The waters were to the loins. Afterward he measured a thousand and it was a river that I could not pass over. And he said to me, Son of man, hast thou seen this? Then he brought me and caused me to return to the brink of the river. Now when I had returned, behold, at the brink of the river were very many trees on one side and on the other. And then he said to me, These waters issued, these waters issue out toward the east country and go into the desert and go into the sea, which being brought forth into the sea, the waters shall be healed. And it came to pass that everything that liveth, which moveth, wheresoever the river shall come, shall live. And there shall be a very great multitude of fish, because these waters shall come thither. For they shall be healed, and everything shall live whither the river cometh. That's, this is verse 10. And it shall come to pass, this is an important verse, that the fishers shall stand upon it from Engedi even unto Eneglim, and they shall, they shall be a place to spread forth their nets. Their fish shall be according to their kind as the, the fish of the great sea, exceeding many. But the miry places thereof and the marshes thereof shall not be healed, they shall be given to salt. And by the river upon the bank thereof, on, the, on this side and on that side, shall grow all trees for meat, whose leaf shall not fade, neither shall the fruit thereof be consumed. It shall bring forth new fruit according to its months, according to his months, because their waters they issued out of the sanctuary, and the fruits thereof shall be for meat, and the leaf thereof for medicine. Now there's a very similar verse uh, the, as far as this end goes here uh, in the book of Revelation. Um, I wanted to bring this up because you saw how he, when he measured, measured a thousand over and over again from the ankles, the knees, to the, the, the loins until there was healing waters to swim in and these healing waters went forth and they, they brought forth a great many fish. And this is all related to salvation. And it can only be, it can only be, and since that is related to the book of Revelation, we know it refers to the end of time, it can only be this is language of salvation toward the end as these healing waters go forth. So I wanted to point that out because, you know, there's been some comments about the 1335 days will nothing happen. Yeah, don't, be patient with it because God is showing something here. He's showing something in Ezekiel that... Uh, his salvation will go forth, but it's on his timing. And these healing waters um, and the fishers who go forth to fish are the believers who spread the gospel and these healing waters will be healing waters to swim in. A great, great outlook of uh, salvation. Now, I wanted to look at some people's teachings. Um, this is from L.R. Blogger. Um, on YouTube. Uh, this is Daryl. I know Daryl. I've studied with him uh, from I think it was like 2001 on. We were studying on a, a Yahoo group uh, along with many others. And I think what he has arrived at um, I don't think he's teaching no more salvation. I, that, I'm not really sure of, but I don't think he is. But he's arrived at the year 2017 slash 2018 and I'm not really sure what he means um, 
or where that would fall in 2017 or 2018. But he had a study up, um, number 23, signed from heaven, 1994 to 2017 slash 2018 AD. And um, I know how he's arriving at the 2023 years. It's from Christ's birth in 7 BC to 2017 AD, and that produces 2023 years. Um, and he's using that trail end um, number of 23 years to show that there's a judgment. Uh, it's, and 23 definitely, definitely, definitely is related to judgment in the Bible. Um, so Mars Hill's Bible study um, attempts to show how 23 is a sign for the end. I agree that 23 is a number of judgment, but again, do we focus on the trail in number of, of 20, 2023 years or the factors which make up the larger number. And I presented this before on 2011 studies because I think it's important to see this, how when we go from Christ's birth in 7 BC to 2017, it shows a time of great salvation. And it, that produces 2023 years, and that is seven times 17 times 17. Now this is, from the birth of Christ to the year 2017. I'm also seeing 17 show up in 2018. So I'm seeing in those two years, 2017 and 2018, leading up to the Feast of Tabernacles, which we've been proclaiming on 2011 studies since 2011. Um, 2018, the year of possibility was the first video I produced on this. And it showed um, how a seven year period of great tribulation, Here's another thing. I've noticed one of the errors in some of these teachings that are going forth, they are still um, relating the, the 8400 days to uh, a name of Great Tribulation. So they're calling the 8400 days Great Tribulation and that is not the way the Bible defines Great Affliction or Great Tribulation. It has always been defined as a seven year period of time. So what I've been teaching is that yes, the 8400 days were true. We came to May 21, 2011, but Christ didn't come, nothing happened. Well, what happened is shown in 2 Peter 3. When, when Christ, um, talking about in the context of Christ coming and the flood and everything, we were focusing on the 7,000 year anniversary of the flood but we weren't looking at that language carefully. And when you do look at that language carefully, the Lord is not slack concerning His coming. We have to include that and the long suffering that God has. And so when we came to 2011 and nothing happened, we, I went back and I reread that, 2 Peter 3, and saw that the reason is, is God is long suffering. He is not slack concerning His coming, concerning His, His promise, the promise of His coming. But he is not willing that any would perish, and all who he's elected to save will come to salvation. And we see that same language in Matthew 24. Unless those days are shortened, no flesh would be saved. But for the elect's sake, those days are shortened. That's why I believe we've, we've entered this seven-year period of time. And as far as the shortening of the days... But we can know that the, um, the shortening of the days relates to salvation and for the elect's sake, those days are shortened. Um, all flesh is like grass. God relates uh, flesh to mankind. No flesh would be saved, uh, saved by the Spirit of God. So we, that does confirm that we had a time of famine during the first three and a half years as these doctrines of no more salvation went forth. And that famine um, did not produce um, salvation in large numbers. I'm not going to say that it was impossible because Christ gave the example of Naaman and the widow. I am going to say that we can be very confident that in the last half of the three and a half years 
leading up to 2018, there is going to be a, a worldwide explosion of salvation, and it's going to be healing waters to swim in. That's, that's the importance of the 1335, bless us he who waits and comes to the 1335th day. Because after that time, you see this increase of salvation. And you can go to Joel 2, it's saying the same thing. Um, God sends forth like a combination of rain periods where these rain periods produce salvation. James 5 says the same thing. Um, Elijah, you know, was a man subject just like we are. And he, he prayed for no rain. God didn't send rain for three and a half years. He prayed again and then the rain came. We have to look at those time clues in James, in Joel, and see how, Joel 2, see how that the second half of Elijah's uh, prayer produced rain. And that has everything to do with the husband and waiting for the precious fruits of the earth to come forth. And that precious fruit is salvation as God's kingdom is built and the wall will be built even in troublous times. This is the great tribulation of seven years. Um, there's worldwide evidence of this. Um, the, the earth itself is groaning. I've seen more volcanoes and earthquakes in, during this period of time um, than I've ever seen before. And it's like, it really seems to be increasing. And uh, I don't report, I don't like go on and say, okay, this one happened. I do on my Facebook page, but not on uh, you know, normal studies that these, you know, this earthquake happened here and this earthquake happened there. But maybe I should start doing that because it's, it's incredible to watch. Um, now, Daryl study, L, LR blogger, I think that's a lot of rain blogger, um, that's on YouTube, by the way, if you wanted to check out his studies. Um, he's showing that the, the 20, 2023 years leading to 2017 um, is the time of Christ's return. But he does say 2017, 2018. So I'm not sure what, which preciseness of where he's honing in in 2017 or 2018 on which feast um, that it would be related to Christ's coming. I'm not really sure. Um, and I'm only going to focus on this study today of his. Um, and the next two studies, there will be other people who are teaching, and including E-Bible Fellowship, who's still teaching No More Salvation. Um, so here we have, uh, the author of this video believes in a 23-year Great Tribulation and discounts the 8,400 days which ended in May 21, 2011. Um, now that his 23 years of Great Tribulation are 1994 to 2017. Now the problem is that Great Tribulation is only identified, as I said before, by a seven year period when Jacob went into Egypt under the care of his son Joseph. That's the Great Affliction. That was a seven year period. So we have that historical marker to look at and say, okay, when Christ spoke about Great Affliction or Great Tribulation, um, in those days will be great tribulation. He was referring to the seven-year period. That was confusing for a lot of people because back in, during the 8400 days, people were calling that great tribulation. So when that didn't come to pass, they there was a verse that talked about after the great tribulation, the sun will be darkened, the moon will not give her light, and the stars will fall from heaven. Okay. So when they see it didn't come to pass, they created this spiritual judgment day um, teaching. And they said, well, that's spiritual language. It's not a real literal. But the problem with that is it was not, the 8400 days was not the Great Tribulation. That was the captivity of Judah. That was the, representing the, uh, the um, 70 years of Judah com coming under the captivity of Babylon, King Nebuchadnezzar. Then what comes after the 70 years historically shows how there's a turnaround and a rebuilding process. The wall will be built in troublous times. So we have all this language that points to a seven year period which started from uh, May 21, 2011 and it goes, uh, the seven year period ends May 20th, uh, 2018 and that is the time, I believe, that 
there is going to be a great harvest, a great um, salvation worldwide. And actually, it could be 2017 and 2018, but these healing waters to swim in. Because there's that four-month period of time until the Feast of Tabernacles in which I, I shows the number 17 very well. And the number 17 relates to the price, the, uh, price of redemption it relates to, it doesn't relate to going to heaven it relates to the price of redemption or salvation itself so when we see 17 uh, in these larger figures larger numbers important dates it's relating to the time when um, salvation and to back that up you see the 153 fish well that has 17 as a factor so we know that the catching of 153 fish uh, a great multitude of fish as we read in uh, Ezekiel also, that it's going to be a time of great salvation, and that's that's going to just generally increase until the waters are healing waters to swim in. Um, now we talked about the great tribulation, how it's a literal seven years by Jacob uh, going into Egypt, and uh, now Daryl has called this 23 years of great tribulation, 1994 to 2017, and I don't agree with that because. Um, he does discount the 8,400 days at this point, and so if you if you separate or if you discount it, then you're not going to follow the historical pattern. I've said this over and over again. We have to follow the historical pattern. The historical pattern of what came after the 70 years uh, includes Nehemiah, includes Ezra, as they they went back to Jerusalem and Ezra taught the the law and the statutes and uh, Nehemiah built the wall and we learned in previous studies that God is the one who does this now toward the end it is his salvation his spirit that goes forth and saves people and builds that spiritual wall of salvation um, worldwide as people become saved so the, even though the timeline seemed like a real long period of time after the 70 years that they did this and I'm talking about Nehemiah and Ezra um, in God's timetable he says that there's going to be a short work, a short word upon the earth, and that short worth, short work produces salvation. Um, that's important. That's an important aspect of the short work. We don't know what it is yet. I, I'm not sure if it's 2017 and 2018 combined. I'm not sure if it's just 2018. I'm not sure if it's even the four months that lead up to the Feast of Tabernacles. But we know that God's going to produce a short work and that short work will produce salvation and that's that's the husbandman waiting for God that's God waiting for the precious fruits of the earth as the rain periods come so we have this illustration in James we have it in Joel we have it in uh, numerous verses in the Bible that show that God is going to produce salvation toward the end the believers are here for a reason to proclaim the gospel we're not here to say uh, heaven shut up and you know you can't enter um, so we taught before previously on 2011 uh, studies that um, there was a this period of four months in 2018 um, from uh, Pentecost until the Feast of Tabernacles is 136 days and this is why I believe it's a time of great salvation um, it's 2 times 2 times 2 times 17 that's the factors of 136 days it's like a four month period a little over I think and uh, 2 times 2 times 2 times 17. So we have this, and there's another teaching that is saying no more salvation for seven years, uh, and then we're going to come to May 20, and it's going to be the harvest time, and it's going to be, you know, Judgment Day. I'm assuming they're assuming it's Judgment Day on May 20, 2018, which is Pentecost. But I don't think so. I think that we're going to have to we're going to have to slowly go through this and see that God is saving right up to the last day. And again, with that study, the last day is never Pentecost. It is always related to the Feast of Tabernacles. So people have... I don't know what's happened <laughs> in Bible study. I really don't. You have people just coming up with their own ideas, it seems, instead of following the patterns. We can get way off course if we're not following the biblical patterns. The you know God mentions the years of Cyrus the years of Darius for a very good reason uh, the temple was complete in the years of Darius in the six years of Darius the sixth year of Darius 
and th there is a beautification of the temple and when we study the Bible we understand that the beautification uh, God will beautify the meek with salvation that beautification of God's spiritual temple as people come into the kingdom of God has everything to do with salvation it's it's part of the whole program that God does at the end so we're going to be looking carefully at that again but there's going to be some different studies um, coming up we're going to be looking at uh, what everybody's teaching and then we're going to go off and do uh, something different than that um, so we talked about the uh, the time of Pentecost and the 13 blessed is he who comes to the 1335th day um, but again I think that was a marker in other words that was a great marker of salvation going forth once again after the three and a half years of spiritual famine um, I didn't mention that in the book seven years to a better tomorrow I didn't put the the passage of Ezekiel in there and I wish I would have I might have to revise that to the further get the understanding of um, blessed is he who waits it comes in the 1335th day this is Acts 2 46 and they continuing daily with one accord in the temple and breaking bread from house to house did eat their meat with gladness and singleness singleness of heart praising God and having favor with all the people and the Lord added to the church daily that's what such as should be saved that's what I was pointing out with the gradual increase after Pentecost daily daily people came in so we have this 1335th day in 2015 and then from that last section of the three and a half years it's a gradual increase of salvation um, oh yeah this is in Ezekiel 47 and 48 there's a really important verse that talks about the name of the city is the Lord is there and the leaves of the trees is for medicine whose leaf shall not fade But for there to be fishers and a great multitude of fish from Engedi to Enaglam is really a grand picture of uh, God taking the, the Dead Sea, which is termed the Dead Sea, uh, salty, salt, salty lifeless waters and producing healing waters, waters to swim in. That's an amazing thing because I think the salinity of the, uh, the Dead Sea is like five times more than the Atlantic Ocean or something like that I mean it's just the water's dead because of the salinity the salt content but then in Ezekiel 47 it says and it shall come to pass that the fishers shall stand upon it from En Gedi even unto Enaglium and they shall be a place to spread forth their nets their fish shall be according to their kinds as the fish of the great sea exceeding exceeding many but the miry places thereof and the marshes thereof shall not be healed they shall be given to salt now here's a bit of like history of the Dead Sea I wanted to read this this is the the salt sea in history and prophecy by Wayne Blank the Dead Sea as it is known today the term is not used in the King James Bible is a large inland body of salt water that measures about 80 kilometers and 50 miles long uh, 16 kilometers 10 miles wide it is located about 19 kilometers or 12 miles east of Jerusalem in, in Bible history it is variously known as the Salt Sea the Sea of the Plain or the Eastern Sea it today forms part of the international boundary between Israel and the Kingdom of Jordan 
Um, the surface of the Dead Sea is 393 meters, and this is interesting, uh, This, the, as, when it translates into feet, 1290 feet below the sea level surface uh, of the Mediterranean Sea, which is only about 80 kilometers, 50 miles to the west. The depth of the sea, of the Dead Sea, ranges from only 3 meters, 10 feet, to an abysmal 396 meters, or 1300 feet. Although its primary source is, is the freshwater Jordan River that flows into the Dead Sea on the northern shore, the Dead Sea has no outlet. While the extremely high rate of evaporation from the heat of its wide open below sea level desert location causes a high evaporation rate that removes water while leaving behind the salt and other minerals that are naturally found in fresh water. The result is the salt sea has a very high salt level, about five times that of ocean water. Um, let's see, the first biblical mention of the uh, salt sea is in Genesis in the Valley of Siddim, which is the salt sea. So if we back up and we go to Ezekiel 47, um, I got some pages out of place here. Uh, Ezekiel 47 says, Afterward he brought me unto the door of the house. And this is when he's, he's measuring everything. And you see it until there is healing waters to swim in. It's just fascinating to me that God uses the example of the salt sea. And, it, you know, it, it, it doesn't produce any life whatsoever. Then all of a sudden these healing waters come along and there's life. Um, now I normally don't look at commentaries um, online because I find that you know there's a lot of these commentaries um, are always injecting a, the praetorist view of the the you know what the Romans did to Jerusalem in 70 AD and they think a lot of the end time verses relate to that and so there's no fulfillment to, of the end and a lot of them are just even the thousand year reign of Christ a lot of you know have that they're looking through the lens of that so it's almost hard to to really get a grasp of what they're saying because their doctrine is off in the first place. But there are some every once in a while that I'll look at. And when it talks about these healing waters to swim in, this is Gill's exhibition of the entire Bible. And it shall come to pass in gospel times what follows had a fulfillment in the first times of the gospel and will have a greater fulfillment in the latter times of it. Now that's pretty spot on because that's what the healing waters represent, the gospel. And he's saying that latter times it will have a greater fulfillment. It's almost like the, uh, the time of Pentecost um, was an example of what's going to happen at, at the end on a larger scale, on a worldwide scale during this final three and a half years. Um, this is uh, Matthew Henry's concise commentary. These waters signify that the gospel of Christ, which went forth from Jerusalem and spread into the countries about, also the gifts and powers of the Holy Ghost, which accompanied it, by virtue of which it spread far and produced blessed effects. Christ is the temple, he is the door, from him the living waters flow. Another good commentary. So it's, it, they understood that it was relating to salvation, and that's that's the healing waters to swim in. It's a gradual increase, and it's going to be that way uh, in the coming few years coming up here. 2016, I, I'm not seeing any numbers show that, but in 2017 and 2018, absolutely yes. So where God's short work starts, and it, it obviously goes to the end or the last day, um, where it starts, I really don't know, but it, in other words, from the ankles to the knees to the loins until there's healing waters to swim in. So it's, it's a, a great gospel explosion toward the end before Christ comes. Um, so I read Gill's exposition of the entire Bible, Matthew, Matthew Henry's concise commentary. Um, there are, this is my comment, there are 48 chapters in the book of Ezekiel. I do believe these waters ushering forth, which eventually turn into healing waters to swim in, do represent salvation worldwide in the next couple of years, especially 2017 and 2018. Um, this is just the end of this. I, I mentioned this because of the number here. Uh, Ezekiel 48.35, it was round about 
eighteen thousand measures and the name of the city from that day shall be the Lord is there um, and then eighteen thousand you know whatever is meant by that measurement is two times two times two times two times three times three times five times five times five or four times forty five hundred so we have this uh, like a universal um, uh, measurement which is it's talking about salvation you know, we can be really assured of that read Ezekiel 47 and 48 and just you know reread it look it over because I think it's relating to um, these final years of history as it talks also about you know this language of the uh, the the healing um, the healing of the nations I should have brought that um, about the trees, I should have related to, to the uh, the verse in salva- the verse of uh, Revelation, which speaks of uh, salvation. Also, let's see. Oh, Ezekiel forty-seven twelve. Um, and by the river upon the bank thereof, on this side and on that side, shall grow all trees for meat, whose leaf shall not fade, neither shall the fruit thereof be consumed. It shall bring forth new fruit according to his months, because their waters because their waters they issued out of the sanctuary and the fruit thereof shall be for meat and the leaf thereof for medicine now what I'll do since I just read that is I'll post uh, the final thing of this video I'll just post the, the verse of in Revelation and uh, so as we review other people and what they're teaching um, if they have any any comments they want to give me send me an email at 2011studies at gmail.com the reason I'm showing what everybody's teaching is because I believe it's important to follow the patterns of biblical history and um, if I've said something that you said you're teaching something and you disagree with it say I never said that well you know I'm trying to go as close as possible to what you say say for instance uh, this study, this video study on YouTube was the number 23 signed from heaven 1994 to 2017-2018 AD. I want to find out, you know, where is, is he, this author placing um, the, the coming of Christ? Is it 2017 or is it 2018? And if it's any of either one of those years, how does that relate to the, the feast days? Um, you know, where's the preciseness of this? So that's one thing I really want to find out uh, if this person is also teaching uh, No More Salvation or not. I don't believe he is. Uh, if I know Family Radio is not. Their teaching salvation still goes forth. Um, but there are people who are teaching that and that's completely wrong. Absolutely, positively completely wrong. So we're going we're gonna to be uh, studying some of this more information as these healing waters go forth and we probably can get a little bit further into the miry places which were given to salt um, which is a judgment and what that means so anyway my name is Marty Cattuzo 2011 studies God willing will continue um, as we study these things about Christ coming toward the end um, in these final, final years of history the book is seven years to a better tomorrow uh, it's available free to read on uh, 1335days.com. If you have any questions, email me at 2011studies at gmail.com. Thank you and God bless you.